I'm Winchester born and bred and um, from a child I was always very very enthusiastic about maps and photography and all things pictures really and I always felt that uh, the shop here under the Kingsgate Arch was a perfect location for a business. Welcome to Hayward Guitars, Winchester's oldest running guitar emporium. It started in 2000 where I'd been prior to that building guitars for friends and building guitars for fun uh, and it's one of those hobbies that got seriously out of hand. I was kind of working as a carpenter prior to that and had a back injury uh, so I couldn't carry on um, doing the carpentry job so I thought guitars, guitar shop, that's what I want to do. I've always been busy, retail goes up and down um, but here we are 21 years later and still going. <laughs> have known each other for years. We were both at Winchester School of Art. A long time ago. And we I... won't say when. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and then when we left, we kind of continued working together and we worked on so many projects and set the colour factory up, which was initially in Stockbridge Road. Tiny. <laughs> and lots of rats scurrying, scurrying out around the out the back, yes, which we could watch. But it was, a, it was a good little start. So, Early days. And we were there for 10 years, weren't yeah. we? And then, yeah. and then we wanted to develop the business and expand. We, had, and we, were, teach teach, well. we were teaching a little bit, but we were so crammed, there wasn't room for anything. I'm Rosie and I'm an artist and teacher at the Colour Factory. I've been here for about five or six years. I have to say, the walk to the shop in the morning is amazing. You come past the magnificence of the west front of the cathedral, through Inner Close, past the deanery, past the boys' choir school, pilgrim school, past Cheney Court, the half-timbered building, through the Close Gate to the King's Gate. So when you're in a band, you're always changing your guitar or finding an excuse to buy another guitar despite your mum's best advice. She says things like, you ain't bought another guitar, have you? <sighs> yes, I have, I said. But if you don't like it, I can go and buy a motorbike instead. Um, again, more bands, more different styles of music, started playing banjo, started playing any instrument I could. And then I worked out that it is kind of really easier to make a bit of money fixing guitars rather than playing in bands. Of course, uh, I think the reason anybody gets into, into rock and roll is to get the chicks, oh yes. And of course that was one of the reasons. I soon found out that after a gig, um, I'd be on my hands and knees on the stage, rolling up leads, putting stuff in bags. By the time I'd finished that, the girls are gone. <laughs> They're gone. Well, off with my mates who didn't play in a band. We've been going now for 27 years and we have had to adapt as we've gone along. We have been through recessions, we have seen our painting sales perhaps not be as great as they were, so then we've had to move more into teaching. Yeah, so I think has the business changed? It sort of has, well it's developed in a really good way, but sometimes through adversity as well. Yeah. Yeah, we've had, we've had difficult, as Rachel says, we've had difficult times. We've had really good times when we almost didn't have enough time to do all the paintings for the hotels that we were working for, working all night on canvases together. So Rachel and I paint paintings together as well, which is quite unusual. In a way, I'm a kind of a dying breed of somebody who has a passion and some, some knowledge of antique maps and prints and the different cartographers work down hundreds of years going you know we have maps in the shop today 400 years old there's not much you can go out and buy that's 400 years old and I think their value and antiquity and their exquisite craftsmanship how they were engraved has never ceased to amaze me. I think it's a very community shop. Um, purely being here for 21 years, I think, shows that. Uh, I've, I've always been involved in community projects like the Winnell Rock School, or, or if I can help out with any of the local schools, I'm happy to do that. 
and I just really want to see the, the local musicians with instruments that actually work. The building that we're in now is the old park keeper's house and it is amazing, it's such a cute little building. It's, it's Edwardian, it's iconic, it's got this great big roof to it and it's like a little house, we love it. And, and what's amazing is it is just round the corner from where I went to art school. And now we've transformed the inside, we've got a gallery, we've got the artist studios um, and the garden is just amazing. It's a, we've got a beach garden. Yeah, I, I teach out in the garden, make the most of it. When the weather's good and the, you know everything's outside plein air. I, I like to think Winchester's a thriving city of great variety, long established residents and um, people who've lived here for many years, as well as there's a un, high, much higher university population. Certainly students come in and buy the sort of travel prints to sort of bring some colour and decoration to their room. and. Perhaps most obviously of all, we always have a large contingent of tourists from all around the world. A friend of mine once said, Mike, you're very liminal in the shop, and it's essentially between two places. It's, it's a gateway under the arch between the Cathedral Close behind me to my right and Winchester College and St Cross. The workshop is more buoyant than ever, uh, and I think a part of this is that people are going to be buying instruments online from the big retailers, whatever. When they get the instruments, they're kind of not working, not set up correctly, so they tend to bring them to me to set them up. I'll get people booking guitars in before they've bought them. It is great having a little purpose um, shop and, and gallery where all the artists can display their, their work. It's just, just like a little sale. showcase, isn't it, really? I suppose it'd be about 10 years ago, um, I coined the phrase, the expression, the Kingsgate Village, to encompass the businesses in this little area, this side of the close gate. It's because we have a beautiful church above our heads, we have obviously the famous public school, an award-winning pub with Wickham Arms, Wells Bookshop around the corner, Cornflowers and Kingsgate Wines and Provisions. People are always going to do what they're passionate about, if you see what I mean. So, you know, I'm passionate about what I do, so whether I do it here or somewhere else, um, it doesn't really make that much difference because I'm still going to be doing it. big part of the business is picture framing. I've always done picture framing ever since it opened and it's become an increasingly large part of the business over the 30 years and particularly in the last eight or so years since my wife Martine has been um, brilliantly helping me with the framing. I think we make a very good team. Framing over the years has changed. A lot more awareness of conservation materials, whether you're preserving an antique map or just a cherished priceless, irreplaceable family photograph. It's not about the monetary value, it's about presenting it to the best, the aesthetic, making the very most of it. So it's a very community-minded street. We've got the, the, the Albion on the end there, which is absolutely fantastic. Lovely beer, lovely beer people. Um, then on the way up, you can get yourself a nice tattoo. You can get yourself a lovely tattoo. Isn't there? Uh, you can get your hair done, get your nails done, buy a paper before coming here. We're a little family of seven artists all together. So we all work in different mediums. We've got Mia, the interior designer, and Carol is a jewellery maker. With gorgeous, precious stones. Yeah, really, really amazing. Lovely. Clever, clever lady. Mm. Oh, we've got How Emily, yeah. Emily, who's uh, the metal smith here. Her work's amazing. And so she was a graduate looking for studio space, come to the colour factory. It's great having her. The location's been used for a number of films, big feature films, most famous in 2012, which was Le Miserable. I'm constantly busy repairing and fixing instruments, uh, which means I don't have an awful lot of time to build new instruments. So a couple of years ago I, I've had a workshop built at home in my garden whereupon I can in, uninterrupted build instruments. One of our favourite 
favourite projects of all time is the art of bollards. Um, in the square in Winchester, um, famous paintings on a bollard, which is not what you would expect to see. Um, and it's just been ongoing. The Mona Lisa is probably the most favourite one, most people's favourite one, and people think it's actually a vinyl wrap, which is... They, <laughs> which they, is... they do not believe that it's hand-painted, but you've, people often see us during the bollard season sitting in the gutter <laughs> in the square with all of our paints out and all of these pots, On the and uh, we're quite a sight, aren't we? Yeah. World they are famous, aren't they? Well, some of them are on Wikipedia now, so yes. And they, somebody even told us that they are photographed more often than the cathedral. So, <laughs> how true that is, we don't really know. So yeah, we initially got permission to do... Five. Five? Provided we painted them back to black and white afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> that was initially how it, how it came around. Um, and we painted them for Hat Fair and the response was overwhelming. People loved them and I think um, the council realised that it was actually quite a good addition to Winchester City Centre. Well, I think it just adds so, to the whole cultural uh, identity, the heritage. It it's just... doesn't it? Yeah. Everybody talks about the high street and demise of that in lots of towns and cities, but actually I think our role and the role of small independent shops is more important than ever. I think that if, if, if you want to have personal service, a friendly face, hopefully a, a constancy of service over a number of years, that's probably where you go. I think that I could possibly be one of the, the oldest standing <laughs> independents in, in Winchester. I'm sure there's a few more around, but certainly in, in Stockbridge Road, um, I'm, I'm the granddaddy. What's great about doing the painted bollards is that we're out on the street and it's almost like a little advert for the colour factory, yeah, isn't it? So we get, in, we get talking to people while we're painting the bollards. It's just lovely to meet people on a, on a daily basis, whether they're customers or locals, friends. As they always say, you should make friends of your customers, not customers of your friends. And that's very true. And you get to know what people's taste is you get to know what they might like for the artwork they bring in on the framing side, so that's always very rewarding. The heritage skills of instrument building, I, I think is, it's really important to do because it is one of those skills that's being lost with mechanisation. So most instruments now come from a, a Chinese factory, a Japanese factory, and we are kind of losing the art of, of hand building, actually working with wood, bending wood. We really do need people who, who are going to carry on, you know, the mantle of, of, of hand building. But really there's nothing quite like building a guitar. Uh, here's one, here's one I built, <laughs> built many years ago and I've completely redesigned it. struck by how the colour factory was a, a first stop for people that were new to the city and they'd come here you know because they want to learn new skills but also to meet people because in these lovely intimate little classes these friendships that some of my students have formed you know five six years they've been coming to the colour factory and it's been just brilliant for the, for um, for that creating a whole hub and a community Absolutely, and, it, and it's also about well-being as mm. well. So people come to do art workshops, not always to, you know, kind of learn a professional skill, but just to feel better. We have a wide variety of early 20th century watercolour prints, which were painted by a number of notable artists of the day, which were loosely known as the English School, You'll also see my friend on the wall here. This is Monty, who's been with me for 30 years. He's a mountain goat, or ibex, and uh, he was stuffed in 1873. And he always gets a lot of comment. People come in to see Monty. The thing I'm asked quite a lot is by people who come in who are not customers. And the most common asked question then is, What's your favourite band? That's what they ask me. And at that point, I know they're not really customers. They're just waiting for a train. I think 
it's quite important, you know, this, this is the whole idea of being part of the colour factory is that we're not just hidden away, we're not just artists working in our own little individual studios, you know, doing our own thing, shut the door. We like to have a kind of a bit of an open door. Always had a, an eye towards local artists who are producing interesting, nice work, whether it be of just Winchester or, or wider Hampshire scenes and we work with a number of local artists to produce um, prints from their work as well as one or two of whom we just sell their original one-off watercolours. Genuinely people like to come in and get advice about their instruments. Uh, they need to know the process I'm going through to repair them, restore them or customise them. So for example when people bring guitars in in two bits um, they need to be sure that I can get them back together and get them playing again. We do, we do really like to connect with other local businesses as well and kind of support that independent um, vibe. So a lot of the bollards were sponsored by the local businesses and independents in the square so we got to know people really well. I kind of need all these bizarre tools to do unusual bizarre jobs. Um, I've got a quirky one on the go here. I designed the horror lady. Now, obviously the theme of this is a werewolf tearing somebody limb from limb. Uh, but the interesting thing is the wobbly eye inside. Workshop full of, full of stuff. If I don't have the right tool for the job, I have it made or, or make it myself. So yeah, Winchester's a great, very, a beautiful city. Very inspiring very. to include in both of our artwork, actually. I do very much enjoy going to the Full Flood Arms for a pint and I love going to the St James's Tavern and playing a bit of rock and roll with the, with the boys and drinking beer. I, I, would say, I would say the future of the business would be to try and maintain it with the same tradition of, of service and friendliness as I've tried to do for the past 30 years and I hope it will continue. I'd never be so presumptuous as to, to say oh, I'll be here forever and a day but you know you take every day as, as it comes doesn't it and try and make the most of that. Mm -hmm.